well thank you so much for joining me today today i thought i would show you through my current skincare routine here in australia we are about to finish our winter season and head into spring so i kind of wanted to show you the kind of skincare that's been getting me through winter before i start to kind of change up my products a bit more for the warmer months so i thought i would get in quick show you what I've been using the last two months or so. Of course you're going to see a lot of products that I have loved and used for a long time and have talked about heaps but I also have a few new products to talk about and show you guys which are really nice and so I'm very excited. It's a nice mix of like old faves and new things that I am very excited to tell you about. A lot of the products are Korean products. I get all my K-beauty stuff off YesStyle. This video is not sponsored by YesStyle but they do provide me very often with like gift cards to purchase products from their site so I would say that I do have what you would call a working relationship with them but they don't know I'm making this video this is not sponsored or anything at all I do though have a real fondness for Asian beauty products particularly in the skincare I find that often they're really really affordable for what you're getting they have quality ingredients everything I'm showing today is also fragrance free so if you've got sensitive skin you don't have to worry about any fragrances or essential oils in these products my skin type is oily however I do find over the winter months it can get very dehydrated uh, we live in Melbourne which is a very dry sort of city anyway and then being at home we have the heating on all the time especially this year because of you know ISO life so I've noticed my skin's been even more dehydrated than usual my plants are definitely feeling the lack of humidity in here so I try to layer up a lot of hydrating ingredients to keep my skin nice and plump obviously I'm wearing makeup right now but you guys will see my skin without makeup throughout the video because I've got lots of demonstrations of the products in action. Besides dehydration at the moment I've been struggling a little bit with some breakouts around here probably mask knee let's be real so mask knee is this new term for 2020 uh, mask acne. I've always struggled with breakouts in this area anyway I would even go as far as to say that I have mildly acne prone skin and the reason it doesn't really look often like I've got acne prone skin is that the skincare I use really helps to address it so I will talk about a couple of products that are specifically targeted for my blemishes to keep them at bay stay tuned that's in my evening skincare section we'll start with morning skincare so the first thing I do in the morning is I wash my face with the CeraVe hydrating facial cleanser this bottle here has lost its He's lost his front sticker, but it is the CeraVe hydrating cleanser that you guys know and love and you've seen me talk about before as well. You can get this from Chemist Warehouse now in Australia, which is awesome and it's available at all the major kind of drugstores, I'm pretty sure, in America. It's honestly one of the best cleansers on the market. It's very gentle, it's non-foaming, it's got ceramides in it so it's really hydrating, it won't strip your skin. If you've got particularly sensitive dry skin, that would be one to grab. Um, but even if you have oily skin like me, I find it beautiful, particularly for a morning cleanse and then I'll go straight in with my toner so my favorite toner this is a brand new bottle as you can see it's full but I've gone through oh here's my empty there you go I've gone through about um five of those I would say honestly over the last year like I absolutely love it this is the Etude House Soon Jung pH 5.5 relief toner if you have sensitive or reactive skin that can often feel a wee bit irritated post cleansing even with something as gentle as like the CeraVe Highly recommend you get this in your life. It is very soothing. I feel like they've changed the formula between this one and the one I was using. It used to be a little bit more watery and I'm noticing actually, having used this for about the past three days, it's it feels almost fractionally thicker. Like it's got a little bit more viscosity to it. However, it applies exactly the same. Um, it's beautiful and I really love that product. Would highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, of course it's fragrance free as is the whole Etude House Soon Jung line. I love almost every product that they have in that line but that's the one that's like my holy grail. And then if my skin is feeling particularly dry and I feel like I need that extra boost I'll go in with an essence toner. So <laughs> this is really just like a ultra hydrating toner. It's kind of might seem excessive to use too but I don't know I just I really like layering them up but this is the Pyukang Yul Essence Toner. Again this is one you can get off Yes Style. it's a Korean brand. This has a very big cult following online. I saw Goth Mester talk about this and rave about this that's why I got it and I've had a couple of you guys as well recommend I try it. It looks like I've hardly made a dent in it but I feel like it's because you don't really need much. Um, as I say I don't use this every day but I have used it like probably about 30 times over the last couple of months and it's gone down like this much 
so it seems to be very cost effective oh my gosh if you want a real boost of hydration but nothing that's too sticky or thick this is absolutely amazing it, i think it feels a little bit more like an essence than a toner it's called an essence toner but that's why I, I layer it over top of the Sunjong because I feel like it really fulfills that essence step of just nice amount of hydration and plumpness to your skin. My next step is a serum. Again, this is a very hydrating one. It has nice cinnamide and ceramides and peptides. It's like a, a little power pack of a serum here. I layer this straight after using the toners because I like to kind of lock in the moisture from them with that serum. And then I will go in with eye cream maybe? I skip this step a lot because it feels a bit pointless to be honest. This is just the Benefit. It's potent eye cream. This is a lovely eye cream. It's nice. Like it's hydrating. It makes your makeup sit a bit nicer under your eyes. But it doesn't really have many actives or I don't really see it doing much of a difference. My favourite eye cream of all time is the Drunk Elephant Sea Tango Eye Cream because I find it does a really good job at helping to fade some of this discoloration I have around my eyes. But I'm not really using that at the moment so you'll see that some of that like I think it must be hormonal because I'm getting so little sun exposure at the moment and I'm using really good sunscreens but that kind of discoloration around my eyes has become really prominent so I suspect it's probably like stress related or hormonal related but yeah I might have to go back to that drunk elephant one just to kind of address that because it does really work well at fading them. So then while my skin is still damp with all the toners and serums, I'll go in with my moisturizer. So the one I've been using most mornings is the Cosrx Hyaluronic Acid Intensive Cream. This is just, again, a beautiful hydrating moisturizer. It is a kind of gel cream kind of consistency, but I think out of all the sort of gel creams that I've tried and loved over the years, it's one of the ones that I think would work for most kind of skin types. I feel like it's moisturizing enough that someone with dry skin would enjoy it, at least for like a daytime moisturizer. But it's light enough for me with oily skin to still really enjoy. Um, it's also massive. You get so much in this, 100 grams. And I'm like, it looks like I've hardly made a dent, but I use it all the time. <laughs> and then finally, sunscreen, of course. The most important step of your morning skincare routine. At the moment, I'm using the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense tinted base. This has an SPF of 30. I got onto this because of Jessica from Jessica Braun and it is a beautiful sunscreen. It's probably my favorite western sunscreen. It is a physical screen as well so if you're sensitive to chemical screens then this is a great option. And don't worry about the tint in it. I know some people are concerned it's going to make them like it's going to be too dark for them especially if you've got quite fair skin like me but I find it works absolutely fine. I know that Jessica uses this like as her morning moisturizer sometimes and I find it not to be moisturizing enough which is surprising because she has dry skin. I, I find I have to layer a moisturizer under it otherwise I feel like it can look a little bit dry because it is a more sort of matte finish. So just something to be aware of I do personally prefer to like layer another moisturizer underneath. I also do still have a Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun in my skincare stash. But I am trying very hard to use up the Paula's Choice one during the winter months because that one is a lower SPF. The Purito one is SPF 50, but the Paula's Choice one is SPF 30. So that's why I'm kind of making a real effort to like get through that because we're about to head into the higher UV months and that's when I'll go back to like my Purito one or the even the Can Make Mermaid Skin is one of my other favorites as well. And then of course just finishing off with a bit of lip balm. So this is the Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm. I wouldn't repurchase this, I just keep getting sent them so it's the only reason I'm ever using them. It's a perfectly fine lip balm but like nothing special and pretty expensive if I'm honest. So that is my morning skincare. In the evening, of course, we start out by removing our makeup. So for that step, I'm still using my face halos. Mine are looking a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> the whole like label's like rubbed off, but they still work really well at removing my makeup. I do this in the shower because I have a shower every evening. And then I'll go in and use a foaming cleanser in the evening. I quite like this step because, I don't know, there's something about using a foaming cleanser that makes my my skin feel really nice and clean. It's like kind of like a clarifying sort of cleanser. But the one I have is very gentle and it's not stripping, so I really love it. It's the Innisfree The Minimum Facial Cleanser. This is for sensitive skin. And the idea behind this whole line from Innisfree is that it's very minimal ingredients. They don't have fragrance and they only put in what they have to. So I quite like that. This is quite a small size. It's only 70 mils, but I do actually quite like that for travel. Not that we're traveling much lately but I think the idea of it being a small bottle is quite nice because quite often foaming cleansers 
a light and massive packaging. But I think it does a really, really nice job. As I say, it doesn't strip your skin, but it does leave it feeling really clean and gets off any extra makeup or sunscreen that you might still have on. Although those face halos are really good. So then as soon as I get out of the shower, I'll go in with my exfoliator. So I use a chemical exfoliant. I'm currently using the Paula's Choice 2% BHA gel. And I will say, I hate the gel. <laughs> I bought this because I thought it would be so much more convenient than the liquid. And I remember using this, like honestly, like six years ago. And I, I remember enjoying it back then. But then I moved on to the liquid and that's what I've been using the last few years. But the last time I placed an order, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try the gel again. And it was a big mistake. <laughs> I'm only using this to try and use it up because it's not that cheap. Like about a bottle of this is like 30 to $40 in Australia. So I am trying to use the gel up, even though I don't like it as much. Um, I just don't like the kind of sticky feeling it leaves on my skin. I really like the liquid and you just use it like a toner. So I use it to help exfoliate inside the pores. It's a really nice deep kind of exfoliating product. But again, it's it's pretty gentle. I've never had any irritation from it at all. Fragrance free like all Paula's Choice products are. And then I'll go in with my little secret weapon product, particularly if I've been breaking out a lot. Although I quite often use this just a very small amount as a kind of preventative ingredient um it's benzoyl peroxide so i've just got some really generic looking you know benzoyl peroxide gel from the chemist the stuff is strong though this is 10 percent. so if you're looking at trying benzoyl peroxide for your breakouts start with a two percent or a five percent something quite low use that for like a month or so and then i would move on to a higher strength because it can be a little bit irritating if you go straight in with a 10 percent. but i found because i was using the five percent one for so long before this that i've only had like just the tiniest bit of irritation with it um mainly just around my my lips because it's quite sensitive skin around there you're not really meant to put it there but that's that's where i break out <laughs> so i usually just put a tiny bit of this around this area and i like kind of pat it in and i'll let it sit on my skin for about five minutes or so so it really absorbs before i go in with like my moisturizing products on top if i'm feeling extra dry and want to you know take the time to pamper my skin i've got this amazing overnight mask kind of sleeping pack that I layer underneath my moisturizer. So this is the Propolis Honey Sleeping Pack. This is from YesStyle as well. One of you guys recommended I pick this up and I am thrilled with it. Like, whoa. The way this makes your skin feel so unbelievably soft, I don't know how it does it. It's just a really like, like gel looking moisturizer. And, I, and when I first sort of opened it, I thought, oh, that looks a bit like nothingless, but oh my gosh. It just makes your skin feel so soft, so plump. So I do a little light layer of that. And then I'll layer my sort of nighttime moisturizer over top. Sometimes I'll use the COSRX Hyaluronic Acid Intensive Cream at night as well. Um, but recently I've been getting into this product from the brand Ab Abib. Abib. I should have looked up how to say that. This is their hydration gel water tube. They have a similar one in white packaging. It's the hydration cream that looks a lot better for dry skin. It's got many more emollient kind of oils and such in it. This isn't oil free. It does have some seed oil in it, but so far I haven't noticed any breakouts from it. It's not too thick or too intense for my skin. And I just find it to be a really nice overnight kind of moisturizer. It's a little bit thicker than the COSRX one. And I absolutely love the packaging being an aluminium tube. But yeah, I just find that this layered over top of that propolis honey sleeping pack is like such a match made in heaven. My skin feels so plump and juicy. Uh, I do have to let it sink in a little bit before I go lie down to go to sleep because otherwise I get it all over my pillow. Um, oh, actually, talking of bedding, if you were going to use a benzoyl peroxide product, only do so if you have white bedding and white towels because otherwise you will ruin your bedding and you'll ruin your towels. I've had that before. I remember years ago when I used a benzoyl peroxide product, I had these beautiful new gray sheets, like light gray sheets, and I was so excited about them. And then I, a couple of days later, looked at them and they had gone all peach colored around like the pillow. And I was just like, oh no. So that's why I tend to stick to white bedding and white towels from now on, because I pretty much use benzoyl peroxide all the time. Seems to be the only thing that is really managing my breakouts um, and I'm really happy with it. So that is my morning and my evening skincare routine. I hope you guys enjoyed having a little look-see into what I'm using at the moment. If you enjoyed this video and want to see videos like this in the future, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me as well, as well as leave me any other recommendations that you think I would love to check out because I'm always, you know, keeping my eye out for new things to add in, even though these days I do try and keep my skincare routine as consistent as possible. But, you know, occasionally a great product like 
the sleeping pack will come in and disrupt everything so <laughs> Do let me know if there's anything else you think I should add. Remember, if you want to interact and chat with me in between my videos, the best place to find me is over on my Instagram. It's just at Anna Elaine. And until my next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and we'll talk soon. Bye.